What's up guys? So one of the coolest gems I've seen in a while is Bootsnap from Shopify. So this gem is actually going to ship with all Rails 5.2 applications going forward. It officially got added to the gem file, even though of course, you know, Rails 5.2 isn't out yet. You can still use this gem, uh, any application in Ruby that you want, as long as you're running Ruby 2.0 or higher. And I believe it needs to be really like Ruby 2.3 or higher to get all of the benefits from it. Um, because there was some bytecode API stuff that opened up in 2.3, which the readme talks about. And so this gem is actually designed to help make your Rails app or your Ruby apps in general boot faster. And so this actually makes two important tweaks to your Rails apps um, or your Ruby apps. And it, namely, um, the results here are amazing. And for GoRails, it cut my boot time in half. For the Shopify core platform, it went down from 25 seconds to 6.5 seconds. So this gem is really awesome, and the way that it does it is it adds a C extension to Ruby. So when your application loads, it will load that C extension, patch some Ruby stuff, and then give you these speed benefits. So what are those speed benefits? Well, um, they are path pre-scanning and compilation caching. So the path is basically a variable um, called load path where it has a bunch of folders in it. And when you require a file like say open URI, you would have to go through each one of those folders and say, hey, is there a file called open URI in here, yes or no? No? Okay, let's try the next one. And it goes through that until it finds open URI or it finds nothing and throws an error. Um, and that's very slow because every time that you require a file, which you do a lot, um, that is going to be a thing where it has to scan that path and keep doing that every single time. And so what they do is they patch it so that it will, when your application loads, it will check for all of those and then it will give you that cache and then it will be able to tell you immediately, here's open URI when you ask for it or whatever file you're looking for. The other big benefit they do is they cache the result of the Ruby bytecode compilation. So bytecode is actually this intermediary format. So you write Ruby and you think of Ruby as the code that you write, but what actually happens is that when you run your Ruby code, it takes your Ruby, it parses it, it creates bytecode, and then it feeds the bytecode into the virtual machine to actually execute. So this is Ruby saying, here's what you wrote, here's what that should actually do, and then it will run that code. And so this actually will cache the bytecode to disk and then allow you to load that bytecode up without having to reparse and compile your Ruby code. So if your Ruby code never changed, you'll be able to load up the bytecode and run that without doing any of that parsing stuff. So this can give a really significant speed improvement for your Rails app. So let's try this out with the Go Rails code base. What I have here is a script that just says Rails runner put out in the terminal, the episode count. And that's it, that's really easy. And all this is really testing is, you know, how long does it take to boot the entire app and query the database once? So the database time should be pretty consistent, but um, we should actually see the most amount of work happening on the loading side. So we're gonna run this a few times, see how long it takes, get an average number, and then we're going to turn on boot snap and do the same thing and see what our average times are after that. So our boot.rb file is going to be the place where we require boot snap later on. So I'm gonna pull that up um, and we'll uncomment it later, but I wanna make sure that it is commented out first. So here we can say time dot slash script dot sh, that script that I wrote, it will run that script and then give us our time back for that. So we'll do this a couple times and see what our average time is. Now the first time might be a little slower, it depends on what's going on on your operating system and things, but you wanna get some average time. Now you probably will notice that it just sped up by a second and we didn't do anything. Well, that first time we're gonna ignore because it took a little while just to get everything ready to go. And see, you can see now that our times are more consistent between 4.7 and 4.8. So maybe 4.75 or 4.8 is our average time here. Um, but it does take a little bit of time to boot our app. I'm close to five seconds. Now if we 
turn on the require boot snap, the first time this goes, it's going to actually create files in your temp cache directory um, for the load path cache and the compile cache. So I've already run this, of course, so uh, these files already exist, and you'll see that now when we run this script, this is going to take a lot less time. So under three seconds now, which means that it was about two seconds faster, and if we do this some more, we should see that it averages out, I think it should be around 2.2, 2.3. Um, that's what I was getting before. So yeah, 2.2, 2.3 is significantly faster than our 4.7, 4.8 that we were getting before. So you could actually write, if you wanted to, a script to do this like 100 times, take the average times, and then you have a really good idea of how much it improved things um, because you're taking 100 runs of each one. That would take a little bit too long for a screencast, but um, as you can see here, it's already a big enough percentage change that it definitely is helping. So. If you just add Bootsnap to your Rails app, you will get a speed increase for running tests, for running your Rails servers, for booting up anything that you would possibly want to do that needs to load lots of things. And that's it. You install the gem and you set it up and you're good to go. So if you wanna learn anything more about how this works internally, I know I just talked about it at a high level, but if you would like to learn about any of those details, how the load path works, or comp uh, compilation caching, go for it. This talks a lot about it. You can even dive into the extension bootstrap or boot snap folder um, and look at the C code for this. Now, of course, this only works on Mac right now and Linux, so maybe if you're really interested and know Windows and C, you could add something like this for Windows, which I'm sure they would love to see. Um, but right now, it's just Mac and Linux, and it does a really good job of that. So you can read through this code, kind of get an idea of how it would work to build a C extension, and then um, you can see how this works internally to do those caches. So that's about it for this episode, and as you can tell, 25 minutes ago they just came out with version 1.1.3, it seems, while I was recording, so that's awesome. They're heavily working on this and trying to make it faster and better and everything like that. So I've been using this in production, so you shouldn't have any troubles. They've been using it at Shopify, um, so everything you see here should be pretty solid. Um, but yeah, take a look at this, and if anybody tells you adding gems to the gem file is going to slow your application down, you can now prove them wrong and show them Bootsnap and just show them how much faster it is. So anyways, I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace.